Good morning, guys. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good? Good. Very good. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the children's roles in technology de uh, design. Um, I'm Gio. This is Miguel, Danny, Javier, and Rodney. Uh, we're going to briefly talk about the four ma major roles in children's play. So the child, we're going to talk about the four major roles, the child as a user, the child as, as a tester, the child as an informant, and the child as a design partner. And I'm going to take you in the girls next. Just hold it. All right, guys, um, I'm Miguel. My role right now is uh, I'm going to explain the, the child as a user. Um, this pretty much began off in the late 60s and uh, early 70s. I'm going to give you guys some, some strengths and some weaknesses of this, this uh, role. Um, pretty much it's very easy to include the, the child when you guys are in the design process with this. Um, it can be seen as the most common and the most simple form of testing, which pretty much uh, an example would be um, kind of like asking the child um, questions, um, observing them, videotaping them, kind of like what we have to do for our assignment. Um, the thing that's not too good about this, though, is that it may take years to kind of like analyze everything from the, from the design process um, to actually analyzing the results that you get from the children. Um, and with that, it doesn't, it doesn't have a huge impact, or at least a direct, immediate impact um, with the actual um, research and implementation of the future uh, new technologies. Keep in mind that when you're, you're actually doing this role, the child is using um, current existing technology already, so it's not like you're going to be um, t uh, testing him or you know, observing the child um, to help with the future, um, let's say, for example, educational practices or anything like that. So it, it, it's, it's very good. It's very easy to implement, very easy to do. But the, the results can be, it can take a lot of time to actually get to it where you want to implement it on future technology and kind of help the child or the designs that are going to be implemented that are going to be easier for the child to learn things. With this also, you have to keep in mind that the researchers are always in control. So, for example, if you're observing a child and you notice things or the child starts complaining or you get feedback on a certain particular uh, thing of a product that the child may not like, then it's ultimately up to the researcher to decide whether he's going to use that feedback or he's going to choose to ignore that feedback. Okay? Um, sometimes uh, researchers or developers of products, they have their own perspective of what would be beneficial to children, and that can be, I don't know, maybe because, you know, how they felt when they were growing up, you know. Um, so, yeah, the child doesn't really have much control or much feedback or much, uh, I guess, an impact in the say of how things are going to change for the future. And, yeah, um, examples would be video observation asking the child questions, or even using software that prompts the child to, to answer stuff, like simple mathematical questions, like a 2 plus 2 equals 4. And if they get it wrong, then he just keeps asking them. Okay? Um, Danny's going to go ahead and explain to you guys a little bit about the child as a tester. It's pretty simple. Basically, the main goal is, as a children as testers, is they're going to help shape the new technology that's coming out. Um, so. The designer will make the product, and then they'll actually test it and get feedback. And then uh, the main challenge, though, is the designer doesn't necessarily have to, you know, use the feedback that the child gives them. They can just basically just continue and let them go. Um, next is going to be. <laughs> and uh, I'll be talking about the uh, the third role that uh, children play in the design of new technology, which is uh, that of the informant. In this role, the, um, the child plays a small, a small part in the design process, although 
it doesn't necessarily mean that the design, the child is in, in the design process from the beginning. Um, the child input is taken into account from the beginning of, the, of some design processes, although, like I said, not all of them. And uh, some negatives of using children in this role are the facts that adults still ultimately decide when to um, introduce the children into the process. And uh, like Miguel said, um, extra time is needed to work with children. And now Javier will uh, explain the last part. All right, guys, so um, the child has a design partner. Um, the main important thing about this is that um, they use children and adults. They put it in groups. So, for example, they, um, what makes things easy for an adult, it could be a lot difficult for, for, for a kid. So that way um, they use them um, to see how the kid does, and they implement it with crayons and clay so they can actually kind of play with them and see how it goes. And they also, lead, uh, also do a strategy that uh, the dress, how they dress, they dress informal so the kid feels more, more comfortable and more confident about it. And also it empowers the kid to show them like they, they feel like more, they, they are like taken seriously about it. And you know, it helps the student like have a better growing in the future for the, the product. Um, so in conclusion, <clears throat> all roles are very good and well analyzed in the uh, Durin uh, article, but we found that all roles are, at the end of the day, uh, manipulated by adults, and adults are, they have the final say, basically. Okay, so um, this is the end. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, enjoy right, the donuts. That's the cute Ronnie. Matt, what's up?